this video segment, what I want to do is tie together quite a few of the models and the information um, that have been addressed in, in most of my Atom videos leading up to this point. So let's take a look at the different ways we can model atoms. Starting with aluminum 27, no charge. So it's not the aluminum ion, it is neutral aluminum. So uh, the hyphen 27 tells me the specific isotope we're talking about. And the atomic number of aluminum is 13 and its symbol is Al. So that's its nuclear symbol or chemical configuration. Um, no charge. So since it has no charge, it's an atom, not an ion. Its um, atomic number is 13, so it has 13 protons. To find neutrons, we look to the mass number. Mass number minus protons is our number of neutrons. Since it's a neutral atom, I have, must have the same number of electrons as I have protons. Okay. Now, before I fill in this Bohr model, um, I want to do another couple of things. I want to do the electron configuration. So this would be 1s2, 2s2, um, 2p6, 3s2, need 13 electrons, 3p1. Okay, so its orbital diagram we could do with lines. One for the 1s, then the 2s, and one, two, three for the 2p, and then the 3s. Whoops, 3s. Sorry about that. Okay, and it's got two electrons in that. One, two. And then finally, we have our three Ps. One, two, three, four, five. Whoops, just one piece. I got carried away. Sorry about that. Let me start fresh with that one. Okay, so for my three Ps, Ah, Dina, there we go. One, two, three. There's only one 3P, okay? And so that would be its orbital diagram. I'll come back to this ion configuration in just a minute. Our uh, valence electrons, you find your highest energy level, which is N. So I have three valence electrons in aluminum. Now let me show you how we would put these into an orbital diagram. So I'm going to use, for each electron, it's going to have its own symbol. So this is the 1s, it's energy level 1, and there are two electrons. In the second energy level, I have two 2s electrons, and then I have my six 2p electrons. So I'm going to represent them this way. If you want to put a circle around them, you're welcome to. However you want to clarify that. I, I don't because I typically ask my students to, to circle electrons and to do things with them. So I wouldn't normally do that. Okay, but some people really like that better. Okay, so I need one, two, three, four, five, six, 2p electrons. Then I look at the third energy level, and it doesn't matter how you put them in here. I have a 3s, a 3s, and a 3p. So that's how I put those electrons in. Now, it, I'm asked to circle the highest energy electrons. That's the last we were filling. So that's our 3p electrons. Then it asks us to put a box around our valence electrons. Those are our highest energy S and P E electrons. So there's an overlap, not always, but in this case there's an overlap between that high energy electron and the valence electrons. Now the question says to write the ion configuration. Aluminum is a metal. Metals are losers. So it's going to lose electrons until it becomes that previous noble gas. So it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and it becomes the aluminum ion. Okay, we don't change the name of cations for metals. Okay, so that's the aluminum ion. 
Let's do one more of these. Um, it's another one that happens to be uh, no charge. You could be asked for ions. Okay, so I have bromine, and it says bromine 71. So that means its mass number is 71. If you look at the periodic table, it's element 35. So we put that on the bottom. Nothing in the upper right-hand side because it's not charged. It's not an ion. So since it's not charged, it's an atom as opposed to an ion. The number of protons is given by the atomic number. Neutrons, 71 minus 35. Okay, and if I can do math in my head, that's 36. So let me check that one on me. Okay, and since it's an atom, it's neutral. I have to have the same number of electrons as I have protons. Okay, now we've got some questions here to answer, but before we do that, I want to get us a model here. So bromine would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p5, 10, 12, 18, 20, 35. Okay, so you can always add up those superscripts and make sure you've got the right configuration. Okay, the orbital diagram. I'm actually going to skip the orbital diagram on this example for time's sake, and I've done quite a few of them. Okay, so now let's fill in this diagram. I have two 1s electrons, I have two 2s electrons, and six 2p. Okay, and then I have my 3s electrons, two of them, and then I have my 3p electrons, No, this is random where you're putting them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I have my 3D elect, excuse me, that's my 3P electrons. Notice this. We go to the 4S electrons first, and then we come back to the 3D. Two, three, four, five, six. Whoops, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fortunately, the periodic table told us to do that. Okay, and then we can come back up here and we hit the four Ps. So the key is, is you might have learned to put them in an energy level order and you do a 2.8.18.32 and electrons just don't enter that way. So we're taking those models to the next level and refining them. So now I have to get my 4P5s. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's the Bohr model for this is one way to do the Bohr model. Some people will just put dots here, um, but I'll tell you, a, a friend of mine, again, Alicia Marusic, thank you, shout out to you. She started doing it this way, and I really feel like it clarifies the structure of the atom. Okay, now um, let's take a look at the ion configure. Well, let's answer these questions. Number of valence electrons. You find your highest energy level, which is n equals 4, and I'd have 2 plus 5, 7 valence electrons. Now, over here, it's asking me to circle my highest energy electrons. Those are the last electrons I was putting in. Notice that the 4P are higher energy than the 4S. Energy is, there's a, the, the energy is given by N and a little bit by um, L. Okay, so you can't just go by N. There's L as well, and I don't know that I've mentioned this in another video, but S is in lower, lower potential energy than P, than D, than F for any given um, N value. Okay, 
So those four four P's are a little higher. And now if we, um, that said circle that, sorry, and I boxed it, my bad. So I'm gonna make those circles there. And now I'll come back and it says box the valence electrons. And that is also the four P that they're circled and boxed, they, they coincide. They won't always, but they do in this case. And I include the four S's as those valence electrons. Now, nonmetals are winners, and they'll gain electrons. And so bromine is going to gain one electron to be just like the next noble gas. So 3D10, and now instead of 4P5, I have 4P6. And now I have the bromide ion. I'm out of room, but here we got bromide ion, negative ion of. So you change it to IDE when it's the negative ion of. So bromide, sulfide, oxide, for example. Okay, that's a lot of writing and a lot of models, um, but it's so wonderful how it gives us so much information of how our atoms are going to be involved in bonding in the next unit as we, as we continue our journey. So thanks for joining me for this part of that journey.